Okay, seven o'clock. Um, my name is Matt Reed. Uh, we're going to call this meeting of the uh, Yellow Springs Board of Zoning Appeals to order. Uh, Judy, would you call the roll, please? Reed. Here. Salmonson. Here. Osterholm. Here. Zop. Here. And I am just going to go back through, and if you could raise your hand for a moment so that everyone knows who you are, we don't because we didn't bring your name plates down. Matt Reed. Anthony Salmonson. Richard Zoff. Scott Osterholm. Uh, Thank you very much for being here. Our incoming solicitor, Brianne Parsons. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Judy. Uh, we have an agenda in front of us. Um, two public hearings. Uh, anyone here have anything to add or any adjustments to this? The agenda just should. I'm sorry, what do you. Oh, you don't have this page? Yeah. Here, we'll share it. Okay. Good. All right. You don't need to share. I'm sorry, you would request a packet. Make sure your bike is on and your. Yep. Uh, we don't have any communication other than I think Judy Fortis won a communication. Yes. Uh, the next item is review of the minutes from our last rock and zoom meeting. Um, do you guys have a chance I, to review I move we accept the minutes as written. Okay. Scott, you okay with that? Yeah, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. I'm sorry, Richard. I was not at the meeting, so I don't vote. feel like I can vote, vote on Thank you. Next item is the public hearing for the Fitz Height Variance. On what's the address? 205 West Whiteman. Um, Before we start, could I make a statement? Sure. I'd like to make a statement that since the weekly council meeting was not held, was a virtual meeting, I think it shows a lack of leadership by the council or paid positions that the first, the first meeting is by volunteers in the open forum. That's it. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we have two um, hearings tonight. The way this works is that we'll hear from staff, we'll hear from the applicant, um, have questions for them, and then we'll open a public hearing. If you have comments, um, anyone in the public can make those comments for the record. We'll then close that public hearing, and then we will deliberate further and then vote. And so that's kind of the process we'll go through. So the first thing we'll do is uh, hear from Denise uh, regarding the 205 West Whiteman. Yes, um, this is for a one foot variance to a fence um, <clears throat> at 205 West Whiteman. The property owner is Lynn McCowan. Um, representing Lynn is um, Nadia Malarkey and she did get permission to represent uh, Lynn tonight uh, with uh, uh, her uh, landscaping uh, business. Um, sh they are seeking this one foot variance on the side yard. Um, <clears throat> yes, you can see in the map that I provided within the report. It's along the side yard um, to the west and then it heads north towards the back just to provide um, privacy between the two properties and the other property owner was um, in agreement with that. So um, Nadia is here to talk a little bit more about it if you need her to. Do we have any questions for Denise? No. Uh, do you want to? Just kind of summarize the situation and. Yeah. 
Uh, can you identify yourself for everyone out on Channel 5 land? Nadia, why will the part of the fence that's open, you know, you can see through it, yeah. be seven feet high? Can we turn the microphone on? Your microphone's on, I'm sorry. Um, the button, yeah, the button. Push the button. <laughs> do I need to do that all over again? No. Oh, good, uh, no. thank you. <laughs> exactly as you did it the first time. Pardon? Exactly as you did it the first time. Oh, yeah, right. Maybe I'll be better the second time. <laughs> Any other questions? I have one. Yes. Do you own the house and the property? No, I'm the garden designer. And I be, I'm representing Lynn McCown. You're representing her. Yes, and I, yes. we got the approval from well, my I client. Stating that. Yeah, okay, thank, thank you. You're welcome. Any other right. questions? Oh, one other thing that has come up is that the neighbor to the north, who I met with last night, she didn't realize that that chain link fence is hers so she will be removing that and so we will be creating a low fence that will be under six foot on the northern perimeter as Ms. McCown has dogs and that was part of we needed to have a place to enclose the dogs so we're creating a design knowing that in the future the northern property neighbor will be removing that chain link fence so thank goodness we found that out sooner than later so it will accommodate that and on that side of the property we will not be going above six feet okay any other questions all right thank you thank you uh, any more questions for Denise before we um, open the public hearing? Yeah. Just, just one question. I'm, if anybody, anybody, Denise or anybody else knows, do we have a, a rationale for limiting fence heights to six feet? Aesthetic value. It's just I mean, is that just normally most people can't see over a six foot fence, so that's enough? Or is it a safety issue if fences are taller? I don't know. It's just, been, it's just been in the code since 2013 at least, and, and, and it's eight feet for non-residential areas. Okay, so, so we're not, it's, it, if eight-foot fences are allowed in some places, it's obviously not an issue about 
the, the fence blowing over or, or some other kind of problem by being taller? Not that I'm aware of. Anything else? Okay. Yes. We're going to start with that right now. So, yeah, so if there's no more questions for staff or the applicant, then this is where we'll open the public hearing. If you have comments um, on this topic, step forward to the podium, um, identify yourself for the folks on television, and, uh, and let's hear what you have to say. Um, my name is Lisa Russell and I live at 209 West Whiteman Street. I'm the property owner to the west and I'm the one with the deck that's kind of high and it looks right over into her back room and the, 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 um, our backyards are very small. We don't, we don't have a huge um, property so having that um, privacy on my side and hers eventually would um, be really nice. And we're in full support of it. I think it would be a, a good thing just um, for, because of the size of the lot and how close we are. Um, you know, I, her house is like where you're sitting. Yeah, okay. Any questions for me? That's all I had to I say. Do you own your house? Yes. Okay. Okay, okay. thanks. Anyone else have anything um, on this topic? If not, then I'll close the public hearing. And we'll move to deliberations. Um, Denise has outlined for us our, our criteria that we should evaluate, help lead our discussions. The, uh, the eight criteria in the past we've been doing is going through these one by one and actually by voice or by uh, roll vote. Um, agreeing or disagreeing with respect to the specific application. And so the first one of these is whether the property in question will yield a reasonable return or whether there can be any beneficial use of the property without variance. And so any comments or discussion on that? Okay. Um, obviously, it's been in use for years without the fence, so it seems pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah, obvious. Uh, Judy, do you want to pull the panel? Osterholm. Uh, yeah, page two. Zach. Yes. Salmonson. Yes. Reed. Yes. Uh, number two is whether the variance is substantial. Yeah, Richard Shaking has said no. I think I agree with him. Any discussion? No, I'm going to go ahead and change the black foot. That would be substantial. Yep. All right, Zop. Richard? She called your. You want my two cents on yeah. this one? I want well, a yes or no. She's calling the roll, Richard. I'll call the roll. Yes or no. Oh, I'm. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear. No. Salmonson. No. Osterholm. Yes. Reed. No. Number three: whether the essential character of the neighborhood would be substantially altered, or whether adjoining properties would suffer a substantial detriment as a result of the variance. Any discussion here? I think the adjoining property owner said they would actually suffer a benefit. Any other discussion? Yeah, yeah they're talking yeah. about the front fence barrier. Salmonson. Um, no. Zoff. No. Osterholm. No. Reed. No. Number four, whether the variance would adversely affect the delivery of governmental services such as water distribution, sanitary sewer collection, electric distribution, stormwater collection, or refuse collection. I don't see Johnny Burns here. 
I assume he didn't have any problem with this, if you even asked him. I didn't ask him. Okay. It's on the property line, so. Yeah. Uh, any questions, comments, discussion? All right, Salmonson. No. Osterholm. No. Zoff. No. Reed. No. <clears throat> Number five, whether the property owner purchased the property with knowledge of the zoning restriction. I guess we don't know that for sure. Though. Well, they, they came in and asked for a variance, so yeah, they must have known they must have, I guess. the restriction. Correct. They didn't build the fence. Well, that's probably first. more naughty in knowing the zoning requirements, the fence heights. Um, okay, any more discussion? Okay, Osterholm. No. Salmonson. No. Zoff. I'll say yes. Reed. I'll say yes. Okay. Number six, whether the property owner's predicament feasibly can be obviated through some method other than a variance. I, I find that one really subjective. You could say, oh, you could tear out the deck. <laughs> but that's another way, but I don't know if that's a, a, a satisfactory solution. Right. Anything else? Judy? All right, Zoff. No. Salmonson? Yes. Osterholm? No. Reed? No. You are. Number seven, whether the existing conditions from which a variance is being sought were self-created. Well, that's a little tricky because the person asking for it isn't the person that built the deck, so they didn't create the problem. That's why the point's here for discussion, I guess, Richard. Read it many ways. All right. Uh, Salmonson. No. Osterman. No. Reed. No. And then lastly, whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement would be observed and substantial justice done by variance. That, that's a pretty heavy that's a, That should come with theme music. <laughs> There's a lot of weight there. Well, that's why I asked what the spirit and intent of the the six foot limit is, and, right. and we just said, well, that's just the way it's always been. Yeah. Um, so it seems like the spirit, if we don't consider it a, a major variance, then it's within the, the spirit and intent of the zoning requirement. Um, justice, I don't know what, how justice quite falls into this particular situation. Tony? No. Judy? Osterholm? Yes. Zoff? Yes. Salmonson? Yes. Reed? Yes. Okay, so we've gone through these items. Is there any other comments or questions or discussion that we need to have? Or do we think we're in a position where we can vote on this in one way or another? I have no more questions. Richard? Scott? Nope, just the standard, don't let it happen again, and we won't. <laughs> okay, um, Oh, I have one question. It was a statement that Denise made. You said the fence was on the property line. That's, we, we suggest to people that you put it on the property line um, and know where your property line is. There, um, there's no easement for a fence in the, in the zoning laws? The easement is the, from the property line five feet in on side yards and from the property line 10 feet in on rear. And the reason we ask that you put it on the property line is um, with, the, uh, with the finished side facing your neighbors oh, is, um, is so that you don't create a situation where your neighbor puts one up, 
on you put one in a foot in and then the neighbor puts one in and then how how you maintain yeah, weeds just, and grass and all that issue it's just easier if you just put it on the property line just yep. wondering when you said that uh, yeah thank you why don't we change the zoning law well the, the easement is 10 foot it's not the not an easement we're talking about setbacks so there's, there's, there's no setback for the fence no setback for the fence okay there's yeah you have you have a, a setback for utilities um five feet on the sides ten feet in the rear okay no that's fine i just wanted to say that thank you it has nothing to do with that as well yeah okay but that is a lot of proposal motion here oh, oh. this is tricky i propose we grant the variance as requested i'll Can second you that make a motion instead of a proposal please i would make the motion that we adopt the variance approve. approve the variance as requested all right you have a second i second it any further discussion <clears throat> judy all right salmonson yes osterholm yes Zoff. yes three yes motion carries congratulations Y'all have a wonderful evening. So I was looking at that. I'm, I'm questioning why they'll just slap a gut on that thing and put it into a French drain so we'll just reroute the water off the road. Well, yeah, the, the drain. probably cheaper than doing anything else we're talking about. Since we had that. Uh, no, the, it's. The it's yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the blatant disrespect uh, agenda the is. First, uh, but yeah, that's right, solving but they, the problem. Are they the ones that put it there? Yeah. Oh, they are the ones that Setback question. I actually may need you to. Uh, Denise, do you want to walk us through the sure. application? <clears throat> yeah, the zoning office um, received a complaint um, on April 14th about stormwater that was running off from a neighboring property, um, and they, they believed it to be due to the construction of an accessory structure. Um, staff went out and looked at the structure and found that it was very, very close to. Um, the property line and was actually set back maybe a foot foot and a half from from the property line um, <clears throat> there was some back and forth communications uh, it took a little while to gather all that information um, i have a staff person raven barons here tonight because she was actually the one that was um, in communication with the uh, owners and um and reuben schultz is here tonight uh, the owner of the property um so they um had not we when we looked in the file there was not a zoning permit on on file um so and they were of the understanding that um their contractor told them that because the shed is under 200 square feet that they didn't need a uh permit but that's actually um a green county building regulations permit that's not a zoning permit um, so they uh, did come back um, saying that they would um, mitigate the stormwater by adding gutters um, but that they would like to see is there anything that they could do other, other than having to move it because they have a um, small backyard it was sort of the perfect location uh, for this shed um, so we sent public works out they looked at the there are power lines overhead they didn't have an issue with the power lines um, the public works director said he thought that it was over a water main um, he did indicate to the property owner that if they needed to get in an emergency situation to that water main that um, the village would possibly in that emergency have to tear it down and would not be liable to have to 
repair it. Um, since that time, they did locate it with GIS and it is actually over the water line. So uh, if they put um, gutters on it, another six inches, they're probably right up against the, the property line. Um, so as I said, they, they asked if there's something else they could do. Um, the only thing that we could offer them was the Board of Zoning Appeals. So they wanted to come for a variance. And that's where we're at. Um, staff, you know, feels that, you know, had they come for the, for the permit in the first place, we would have said, no, you, this isn't going to work. You're going to have to move it. We'd have to work something else out. Um, and based on that, we, we wouldn't recommend that that it stays where it is. But ultimately, it is BCA's decision, and the owner is here, and can maybe explain you in more detail. The shed is here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Your recommendation is to deny it. Uh, is there any liability associated with this for the village? being over the water line? I'm sorry, Is there any liability issue that this creates for the village? It's a liability to, for the village. I don't see that um, other than if they, there's no agreement with the property owner, uh, if the village has to come in and, and damage the shed, in theory a homeowner would have a, a cause of action, although I think qualified immunity would would step in because there was a necessity to be access the water line for public health and safety. So uh, okay. lawyers can always come up with theories. And so technically, is it possible? Yes. Is it likely? No. Okay. Um, Denise, did you have any correspondence with any of the residents surrounding this? Uh, there from the complaint there was a there was an email that did come in to it wasn't i don't think it made it in the packet in time um just saying that that um whatever is decided here tonight they just want to make sure that the that the storm water isn't going into their yard anymore that that is mitigated that was a letter from the felders right from that was the, an email i think you were it would have been sent to your email yeah, I, I received that, said that as when it rains, it's a, a real swamp in their backyard now. And it didn't used to be that way. Yeah, well, we um, uh, did check, actually, maybe Raven can answer this because I had her contact Green County Recorder's office to see if, I think, I think our concern from, from staff level is you know, we can have an agreement with the property owner, but if that property owner leaves and it's a future property owner, so if there was a way that we could be somehow recorded with Green County, this agreement, um, and maybe Raven, you could answer, just, you can just stand up. Raven Barons is a staff person. What did, what did Green County say? Uh, hi, my name's Raven Barons. I work at the village here. And I spoke with A.J. Williams, the clerk of courts, to see if there was something that could be added in. He stated that really the only thing that could be done is the owner could agree to incorporate an agreement into the deed if he went to sell. Uh, that there isn't a lot of recourse for the village to require them to do that. They could still sell the property and not include it, which might pose problems in the future if there is a new owner assuming that they are planning to sell it. So. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah. 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 Excuse Denise, me. Denise, does the water line Wait. run east-west? In other words, if it's a problem now, no matter where you put that shed in the backyard, it would be interfering with the... I mean, unless you could move the shed close enough to the house to not be over the water line. So the location of the main is... Uh, going behind all of the houses on that block of Omar Circle. Okay, behind all the so houses. So it's, it's right in, in between. Uh, on the original plat, there was a 10-foot utility easement back there already. 
that went about five feet into both sides yards. Um, and from what we could tell from the locate, the shed might be about maybe six inches over top of the main. Uh, so so it, is, it is pretty close. It's not completely covering it, but my understanding is it is on a concrete slab, yeah. uh, but it's not very deep. So it should be removable without huge risk. Yeah. That's my understanding from the public works director. Chris, did you have something? My, my question is, I want to clarify, who said that, 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 it, that the remedy would be to amend the deed and re-record it? Well, the question I posed to uh, the clerk of courts, A.J. Williams, was, is there anything we can record with Greene County Auditor in terms of an agreement that basically is the village will not be held liable if we are required to remove the shed? Let, let me clarify um, one thing. The Greene County Recorder's Office, she talked with them first, and they really weren't sure. Yes. And I suggested she contact A.J. Williams, who's on Planning Commission, because he was the Deputy Director of the Greene County Recorder's Office. And so he was more familiar with it. And you can finish what he said. Yeah, so he said there really isn't any way for us to add anything to the, the deed as a village. Uh, there wasn't anything we could really record. Um, the only thing he could think of was eminent domain, and that's for transportation. I, I, I disagree with that. I think that okay. the property owner can enter into an agreement with the village and that, that that document, whatever it's called, could be recorded, gets in the chain of title, it memorializes what the, what, the, uh, what the understanding is by that contractual agreement. Um, even if it wasn't recorded, although I would prefer that it be recorded, would be that there's a, a contract, there's an agreement, and then the property owner waives the rights to claim for damages, and they can all be done contractually. But the reason why you would want to get a document recorded is so that it would be in the chain of title, so that any successors and ownership would know. And that way, any titles examined when the property owners wanted to sell it would be put on notice of that condition, and that would, might have an impact on the potential sale of the property. But uh, I don't agree with, with what you were told. I understand. I know you're just recounting it. I'm just saying that, yeah. that I, I think that there are ways to protect the village's interest by recording a document. Obviously, the homeowners have to consent to that document, but there are tools to record it. I mean, uh, I, I don't so, see that as an so obstacle. That, that recording them, when, if they, when they go to sell it, then it would, the title company would do a search, it would come up, and then that would be what? It, it would it would carry on or the what the, the language and I'm not going to be drafting it but Rianne sitting over there is that there would be language within the agreement that would include successors and assigns are bound by that agreement it, that's the type of language that one sees in easements so that the pro subsequent property owners are bound by that yep okay and and, and then Right. There would be other language in there that if it were ever a reason, it could not be placed back in that location, at which point the, the agreement would be void because it, there was no reason for it anymore because the condition that required the agreement no longer exists. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions for staff? If not, we'll hear from the applicant. Hmm? If there's any, no more questions for staff, we'll hear from the applicant. No, I don't have anything for staff. Okay. You want to... Yeah, I'm, I'm Ruben Schultz. I'm the property owner, 607. Uh, the shed's been up for about two years, and um, basically I'm taking a variance. I talked to the neighbor, and we came to agreement that if uh, I got the gutters, he would be fine with that. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm just going to, you know, it's been up for two years. So I'm here to answer any questions. Have you talked to your contractor about this? Yes, I did. And, um, well, actually, the contractor was my brother-in-law, and he was a contractor and a realtor. And he said, since we were building it ourselves, that we didn't need a, you know, we didn't need a permit. So I trusted his knowledge. I'm not a builder. I'm a truck driver. I don't, I don't have a clue on how things work when it comes to, you know, that type of stuff. So, anyway, um, actually, the, the neighbor that complained we told them last, last year, we, well, to make a long story short, he had a problem with flooding before, okay? And when the shed was going up, me and the wife and the brother-in-law, we noticed that 
when the shadow was go going up that, I, that it could be a potential of fl flooding. So I talked to them and said, hey, you know, I noticed you have a problem with flooding already. Um, we're willing to put gutters up. But I procrastinated a little bit. And then, you know, I wish you would have came to me instead of, you know, now I'm coming here. You know what I'm saying? So I wish my brother-in-law would have... I felt like I got screwed from him, but I'm not blaming him. I take responsibility. <laughs> I thought he knew the damn law. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why we're seeking the reverend. The, the variance and, you know, I mean, I don't know. That's all I, you know, I don't have anything else to say, but, you know, that, you know. We, I wish it would have been done properly, but. How th how's this thing built? Is it, I mean, you sounds like you could have hit that water line while you're building it. Well, no, he, uh, when he built it, he, he built it with posts. So really it's just posts. And it, he uh, built it with the grade of the land. There was not, it's not a concrete slab. It's, but he did, he got, you know, those paver things that you get from Home Depot or whatever. He, he, built, that, he built it with the, the grade of the land and, he, you know, with concrete, but it's not an actual slab. So how deep the posts, posts go in the ground? Uh, I have no idea he built it. Like I said, he, he's the one that built it. And, you yeah, know. That's where you could have crushed the water line. Yeah. Well, he, um, he, we had it surveyed and all that. You know. So yeah. I trusted his judgment. And it was the wrong judgment, but, you know. Can you describe for them the, the, your back, the size of your backyard? It's really, I mean, it's really, really small. Omar Circle, if you guys know, they don't have big yards. So we, you know, we needed storage. We don't have storage. So that's why we, you know. Went with building, building that shed, so. I just want to make sure that I heard correctly. It's on concrete piers. There's not a concrete slab. No, floor. it's not a concrete. Okay. No. It's like, you know what I'm talking about, those little. Like, yeah, no, I understand that like a sano tube is a trade. Yeah, and he did it with the. With the, uh, with the uh, it just means in, in my mind as a, as a, as a builder, it is po it's possible to move that building. Whereas if it had had a poured concrete slab floor, it would be very difficult to move it. You could, I mean, you could either cut off and, and, and do new piers and, and scab on the old framework, or you could actually dig the whole thing up and, and pick it up. It's not that much mm -hmm. material. Right. That's, that's just another possibility, but as we've noted, the only place that it can move is closer to the house. Moving it left or right doesn't solve the water line problem. No. It might solve the drainage. The other question I had is that putting gutters on the building won't change anything until the water that comes out of the gutters, out of the downspouts, goes some other place. Well, we're, we're going to put rain barrels. I was suggesting putting rain barrels. The, the storm that we just had filled my rain barrel. Okay, now the, your, your, your building quite, isn't quite as big as what I'm draining off my house, but you still have to do something with that water in the rain barrel. Yeah, for the overflow. <laughs> or it will overflow and then, you know, it's not magic. And the net, I looked at the topography and the slope is to the, the northwest. It, it, any water on the ground wants to go cross onto into your neighbor's backyard. So when that water comes off the building, it's, it's got to go, you know, somewhere else. And I don't even know if you could, could tile it or pipe it enough that it would flow some other direction than naturally downhill to the neighbor's yard. You might be able to do a large enough French drain to, to accommodate the water, but I wouldn't count on a rain barrel to do the job. Because when you have lots of rain, it's not when you need the water from the rain barrel. Right. Well, we could do that too, you know, more stone or something on it, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have not put the gutters up, is there a reason? Say it again. You have not put the gutters up. No, because when, when, years, you when, when he filed the complaint, that's when uh, they called me, the zoning. Commission, and so I was. I actually called a contractor. Two, actually, two contractors. I was waiting on a price. They finally gave me a price, and then I called uh, Denise's office, and she said, "Just hold off on it until, okay. until after the meeting." So I, that's 
you know, I haven't pursued it since then because I'm waiting to see what you guys yep. decide. Yep. Any more questions for? Uh, I have a question. Um, for purpose of the record, Mr. Schultz, uh, sorry, I'm going to pull down my mask a little bit because my glasses fog. Um, your Emily Schultz is your wife. Correct. Okay, so Exhibit D with the application is an email uh, from your wife to uh, Raven uh, Barons in the village. And she's got a sentence, two sentences in here. One says, uh, in referring to the shed, it's actually built like a pole barn with posts set deep in the ground. It even has concrete floors. It can't be moved. She's talking about the concrete, uh, uh, like I said. For the post holes. Yeah, the, the post holes, you can identify like, the like, Right. It's not built concrete, but like I said, there's no... Um, no poured concrete slab. It's a prefabricated slab that was put down. Correct. So there's no footer around the building, right? No, no footer around the building. No. Just, okay. No. So, so I guess what I'm asking you is, do you disagree with how your wife described the structure and how it was built? And, right, and, that, and that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Yeah, I, I, I'm confused on this floor. Is these like pavers? That no, they're, I don't know how you describe them. They're like, you can buy them like on Amazon or you can go to Home Depot. They're, they're like, uh, what do you call well, them? How, how big, Cardboard how cylinder. Is that a good description? Cardboard cylinder. They, they stick up slightly above the ground. Yeah, there's probably maybe, maybe a couple. Two inches maybe, and you just pour like concrete, you know what I'm saying? The post is in the middle, and then you pour the concrete in this yeah, they're like little way. Okay, the best way to describe it would be like if you're making cookies, and you want hard Christmas tree, remember, you know, they have the shapes. That's what it is, but it's been built for concrete. And you, somebody constructed the concrete on the land and then filled each one of these? Yes. Well, as opposed to buying it already filled? I can't. As opposed to buying a piece of cement already built. Okay, I got it. Thank you. I, I'm hard of hearing because of my job. Oh, I lost well, some of my. Well, that goes like crazy <laughs> here, too. <laughs> Any more questions for the applicant at this point? Nope. Um, and you own your house? Correct. Does the complainant own. Do you know, do you know if the complaint person owns their house? Yes, they do. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, this is the part of the, well, actually, more questions for staff. Well, um, it's important to me as, as we work on this to really split this into two parts. One is the problem with the building in, in the utility easement, okay, and the, all the legal questions that we, that we pursued. And I would really not like to to craft that from the BZA, I'd like to hear the village say, this is what would be satisfactory to the village. And then we need to decide whether to grant a variance for the setbacks. And, and finally, if we do, if we're willing to grant that variance, what qualifications to mitigate the problems, the other problems, which turns out to be drainage that has been created by, I mean, quite possibly if this building were were even met the setbacks, there'd still be a problem with the, with the, drainage. With the drainage. But um, it'd be nice in, in to put together a whole package here. So we've got several things to look at and consider. And that's can I, I think this one's a little bit tough. Can Especially I, if we go down these questions, depending on which issue we're looking at. Can I suggest that if it is the pleasure of the BZA to grant the variance, uh, if Chris can assure that some instrument can be written on the part of the village that would satisfy the village's uh, legal concerns and leave it leave it there because that would not be drafted by the BZA. So we don't have to we don't have to draft it tonight we just have to say that's part of the You would write that Chris variance. can give you that language I think if, if Chris can give you that assurance that <clears throat> that is something that could be crafted at, his, at, at the solicitor's end, if in fact BZA grants the variance, then you probably don't need to get into the weeds particularly on that. Okay. Well, that goes back, I guess, then to these. Um, is Johnny 
okay with leaving it as it is when it needs to? Uh, yes, Johnny has looked at it and he is comfortable with having an agreement with the owner. He has discussed it with the owner uh, okay. that he would be okay with it staying there so long as they have the agreement that they can remove it if they have to. Okay. So that's your public works director saying that. Staff uh, planning and zoning would say that um, they're not comfortable with that over the water line and would like to see at least moved off back far enough away from the water line. And I think um, that would have to be determined by uh, Johnny, maybe if it was moved back five feet. I mean, the subdivision regulations show it as a 10 foot easement. It's, it's practically at the property line. If your fence is correct, you said that was the property line. Um, so, Denise, it's would a you? Big I'm sure it's in the packet, but tell tell us again how f far does the building need to move to meet the setback? Does it just need to move to the south, away from the north property line, or does it also have to it's, move? It's fine um, on the on the western side. Okay, that's side. what I thought. It's it's the back property line. And does it if it's it needs to be five feet or needs to ten. be ten feet? Okay, but, and it's about but I mean, one and a half now or close to the line. But I know BZA has, has granted up to a 50% variance before. So, I mean, you know, we just, I think oh. our biggest concern, but you have legal saying that there is a way to handle this. You, you know, you have public works weighing in. Well, yeah. I guess my question is, if we, if we granted a, a five foot variance on the rear setback, so the building had to be moved, but it didn't have to be moved so close to the house, but five feet was enough to give the village reasonable access to the water line. Would that satisfy everybody? That doesn't make a lot of sense. If you're gonna move it, you're gonna move it. Well, there's this other problem of, of just not having a very big backyard. Yeah, I mean, how about- I'll say this will be, the way it's built, like so little ground. So I mean, that's why I see the I will not sue the village if you have to tear it down. I mean, I will write that up and, you know what I'm saying? But I just have a question. If we give the variance and he puts gutters up and gives and, and just puts the right words in the uh, agreement, we get it published in the right places, we still haven't solved the water problem, have we? No. Well, that is the agreement that that if that would have to be part of the agreement was is that if the village has a water line emergency. That they no, no, that part. No, he's I talking meant, about the drainage. I meant the, I meant oh, the, yeah. flood, I meant the yeah. flooding off the roof of the water. Yeah, there's still um, that issue too, and that needs to be resolved as well. So that have to be part of anything as well. Okay. Like Richard said, there's two questions here, yeah. really. Yeah. the water line and then there's the drainage. Uh, while I can't speak for the public works director, uh, considering that the shed only peaks a little bit over it, if you were to grant that five foot variance instead of requiring them to completely move it out of the utility easement, that would clear it probably out of the way to the point that it would not require being tear torn down. However, if it is possible to not have to go through the trouble, then it's up to you guys. Yeah. Um, okay. I have a question. She was speaking for Mr. Burns, who said he didn't have an issue with it. If I heard her right, then you came back and said the staff says this. I'm saying as planning and zoning, if he if they would have come with a permit showing that site plan, I would have denied it. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and I would have told them that they needed to move it ten feet sure. forward. Okay, I mean, that's what I understood. Okay, planning and zoning would have told them to move or where to build it, hopefully. Yes. 
But now Jan says it's as okay. Is. is okay. As long as you get it's okay if there's as, as long as they meet the qualifications you put in here. The fact is they can repair the water line if they need to by knocking part of the yeah. building out of the way if they need to. That's not a serious impediment if if they actually needed to do that. Right. As long yeah, I mean <coughs> if, if no, there's a guarantee legality that legally that well. that can be done, which Chris Chris says it can. Um, and then you have the second part of that being the uh, issue with the water is still a problem. So that has to be mitigated somehow. Right. And, and putting gutters on it. Um, may, may or may not. Well, it's definitely causing a problem now because there aren't any gutters on mm -hmm. it. So it's literally, yeah. So there would have to be something, some sort of infiltration trench that was put in or some way to get that that water up to the storm sewer, which is at the front of the property. Because the, the way the land is, the way it goes, because like we just said, it just floats a little bit, it's a, you know, already. Yeah. So no matter what you do, you know, the gutter is not going to work. I mean, we could add stone, you know, but uh, like I said, there was a pre existing, uh, you know, when it rains hard, there was already a pre existing. We've seen it, you know. Well, that's why I talked to Mr. Burner when we came to an agreement. It was cool, man, you know. Um, so, I, you know, he was in agreement with that, and the other situation was on. And then I talked about the rain barrels, and I mean, we could also do it with stone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. Hey, and Denise, have you talked to the Why you have? He's the complainant. Right? Yeah, I put in the report that they they were okay as long as they don't have any more water coming onto their property. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I don't think he can guarantee that. I mean, he can just remove the additional problem created by the shed. I mean, if there's already a problem, I mean, you can't really be held responsible for that. Staff doesn't know if there had been a problem before. I mean, I, I didn't have that indication. When we were originally contacted by um, the owner that lives on the other side, um, he stated that the stormwater issue became uh, very bad and was killing this grass as of two years ago, which is when that shed went up. Uh, okay. So he seemed to notice a difference. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, but it is my understanding from uh, Mr. Schultz that they did uh, add a French drain, uh, but it, it does seem that more mitigation efforts are needed. And Mr. Felder has expressed to me directly that he is satisfied with them adding gutters. The issue just kind of becomes where does the water go from there out of gutters. Okay. Thanks. Any more questions for staff or the applicant? Can you grant a conditional, this I guess to the legal staff, a conditional variance for a year or something? So, right in the legal part, we give it a year or give it six months to see once you get the gutters on and whatever you're going to do if it works. Can I that think, be a condition? I think that the, the BZA has broad discretion to exercise. Okay, I got a follow-up to that. That is, um, what do you mean? I mean, what the end of the year? We take the variance and just tear it down. I'm just, I, we should just go ahead and pass the variance. And if, if it, this doesn't work, it just kind of sounds like that's what's already being well, written in, isn't it? The way I that if this, this water drainage doesn't work, more drastic measure will have to be taken in the future. Correct? As far as alleviating the, the problem with the shed, putting the, water on the said property. The way I'm looking at it, Johnny has said the, the pipe is okay. Right. Okay, so I, that problem is solved in my view, so I answer those questions. But the problem that isn't being addressed is the, 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 lawn, the water in the lawn problem. Um, it's been stated that he would put gutters up and do whatever he can. I think he 
needs a chance to do that. We don't know if that's going to work. You know, it sounds like a good idea, but you know, I don't know if it's going to work. So that's why I was going for a conditional through the rainy season, six months. Um, we grant the variance now with gutters in it. Um, conditional putting gutters up, he doesn't put gutters up. But he puts gutters up and he think the guy's yard still floods. We'll be right back here and we have to rule against ourselves. That's why I make it conditional that within a year, you know, whatever, six months after putting the gutters or doing water removal, whatever you decide to do, we reevaluate, see if the conditions are met. That might drag it out, but it's better than moving the shed than day one, I would think. Yes, yes. You know, th th this might be a situation where um, it might make sense uh, for Mr. Schultz to consider uh, asking that the matter be tabled yeah. and it be uh, rescheduled uh, to, for it to complete the hearing. Um, I, I note that um, in the handwritten letter by the Schultz in the packet, uh, Mr. Schultz, uh, you wrote that uh, we're happy to comply with anything you ask so we don't have to move the shed. To me, that means that you're willing to enter into whatever agreement is necessary to allow the village to have access to the site, waiving any liability, agreeing not to re rebuild the shed, recording the document, have it be binding on successors and assign the signs, et cetera. Um, it also, what I'm hearing is that the BZA is uncomfortable that there have been no remediation, there's no, been no apparent remediation done yet on the drainage issue. So you don't know whether or not that would be successful. So we could go forward today. You could put that condition on the variance and somehow have it revisited. It's a little clunky because there's no good solution here because you've got a non-conforming, non-permitted use. That is not how we want things to be done. So one other alternative could be for the applicant to ask to continue the matter, to table the discussion, take steps to uh, remediate the drainage issue to present that evidence and maybe there could be some more input from the, the neighbor who's affected and that would allow time for the village to and to get the agreement dra drafted and presented to the BZA so you would be dealing with more certainty moving forward um, and I think people might have a greater comfort level all the way around um, as, a, as a possible solution today moving forward rather than ruling with uncertainty he, he said it more succinctly uh, a little more clear i just want to clarify that i did recommend to mr schultz to not proceed with gutters until the hearing had taken place because that yeah. would affect and i understand why right uh, right no, that's totally no, understandable. That's perfect. That was good advice. Well, you know, what, what I'm sort of hearing, and, and I, you know, I'm not putting this in writing or suggesting it, but we're saying if you don't solve the water problem, you tear down the shed. Yeah. I mean, in very harsh terms, that's what. Yeah, I mean, the water line is not an issue, really. We're not going to allow the water problem to continue. We're not going to say you can keep your shed the way it is if that's not solved. So are we as a group okay with what Chris has proposed here, maybe? As a, well, I, I think... I am just going to... Uh, uh, if, if, if he is, I am, because... Well, I think we really need to do, because... Like I said, he's, we're thinking water barrel. He knows how water barrels operate. I'm thinking it's almost like a French drain or some sort of uh, piping to route it over the grade and get it out of that area. Might be the way to go. Um, your contractor, you say he's what, your brother, brother-in-law? Your, your contractor, is he your brother or brother-in-law? So he does all the, he knows how to grade, he's got one of those things that he can shoot. He's got a laser, he can shoot the ground and, and he kind of go tell you how you level, like you leveled the ground inside your, on leveling? Does he have one of those lasers for leveling? He could probably shoot you an idea of how to get the water out of there to where it would be over where it's not going to go back to where his yard is. 
and then we, I guess, just need to figure out where the heck it needs to go from there. Yeah. Chris, you were going to say well, something? Well, I, I think that, that yeah. procedurally, um, the, the idea of a hearing is, is that the, the body has, this quasi-judicial body, the Board of Zoning Appeals, has all relevant evidence necessary to make a, an informed decision. When uh, it, it becomes apparent to an applicant that perhaps all of the information has not been made available, um, that could have an impact on how the body views the evidence because it's imperfect. So if the applicant has uh, the opportunity to present additional evidence that may help in obtaining the variance, uh, that might be something the applicant would want to consider. Um, you know, typically, the board certainly has the power to say it wants more information and instruct the applicant, but I think in terms of the request, uh, it, it's procedurally better to come from the applicant because uh, it's for the applicant's benefit to do it. So are you okay with us essentially delaying this for how long? Three months? Well, Six, well how, long, how long do you want to delay? Matt, let me ask this way. Mr. Schultz, are you, are you willing to ask for a continuance to get some more evidence and, and get some more information pertaining to the drainage and then begin and work with the village to get a contract drafted that you would sign that would address the concerns that staff has raised? I really think you'll save more money in the long run if, if he, if he, because he'll let you, you know, be able to come out there and shoot your land, knowing which way you can get it off to where it's not going to go back in that yard. You'll know exactly what you got to do, and you'll come up with a much better plan. And you know, like you said, you don't want to waste money on material and stuff. All of a sudden, then it's not going to do you any good. At least he can come out there and tell you what can be done or can't be done. So you want me to get to my plan again? I think you need to get your plan together and implement it so yeah. that you actually have evidence yeah. that your neighbor's yard is not yeah. being impacted by the structure. It, it, they're, they're not going to advise you what to do. What, what, but what would be helpful in terms of evidence presented to the body would be more information. Finding if, if your neighbor would to submit something to say, I believe that the drainage problem has been resolved or I'm comfortable with what's been done to date. And then when they can see that there's an agreement, at, that a draft agreement, what it says, that it would address the, the issues because the, the structure is over utilities, um, that will give the BZA an opportunity to weigh all the information to determine whether or not a variance would be appropriate. And so if, if you're requesting that the case be continued for that opportunity, then one of the BZA would need to make a motion to continue the hearing on the, at the applicant's request, and then upon a second, you can vote on it. Are you requesting that? Yes. Okay. Do we have a motion to? Just point of procedure here. Do we want a continuation, or we? I, I, I'm thinking it needs a new hearing. You're going to be looking at a different structure when you view this again. If he does, in fact, mitigate, attach gutters, drainage system, et cetera, you're really looking at a new hearing so the, I, I mean, the, body, the body of the evidence here is all relevant to the, the issue and so this is part of the record so I think it all needs to be one part of one hearing one record it would still need to be re-advertised correct yes. oh yeah yeah okay oh yeah and I did make it clear in the staff report that with the gutters it was right pretty much on the it, it's going to be Six right on the property line. Or on the, yeah, yes. really close. So that's already been stated. I make a motion that we table this for four months. Well, I think you're, you're going to have to schedule something. I wouldn't say that a, dura a period of time. Just say table this until the applicant has. We, well, I, I make a motion we table this until the applicant brings back the applicable evidence. I, I, what I would say is that, that I my recommendation would be that the BZA make a motion to continue the hearing for the purposes of the applicant to take certain remedial steps and to present additional information to the to the board. And that, that that's all you need to do. Did, and it'll did be you rescheduled from there if you approve that motion? Judy, did you capture that by any chance? 
and a second. But how do we, I, and I, I'm not casting any, I'm not trying to be offensive, but suppose you don't do anything for three months, then what happens? Well, you know, we, uh, we're not going to fix something. You know, I don't want to come, you know, well, I mean, let's be clear. I think everybody knows what happens if nothing's done. If yeah. there's no variance, the structure's got to be moved voluntarily, or it will be moved involuntarily, which would mean court yeah. action. All right. Well, that I think that needs to be clear. It's clear. This motion. Oh, well, it doesn't need to be made in the motion. That's the clear end result. Yeah, it's in the package. And I think that I think that what there's an attempt here to understand the issues to see if there's some resolution that could be reached at least in the short term because that st structure is not going to be there forever and you have the power to grant the variance if you think it's appropriate so Chris you're suggesting the motion be to continue the hearing so that the applicant can take remedial steps and then present that information to the BZA Pre present additional information additional. to the, the BZA including a draft agreement with the village for access to the site well that would be villages portion, right? Well, it, 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 it's a combined thing. It, it, I mean, it, it, there will be discussions. And I'm sure that there will be agreement drafted that would embody what needs to be done. And well, my suggestion would be that the village would want to draft its agreement as it wishes it to be to present to the BZA rather than... That, that will resolve. It's a devil in the detail. That will resolve itself. Does someone want to make the motion that Judy just read? <laughs> well, I heard every other word. I'll, I'll... <clears throat> Anyone a second? I'm second. Judy, would you call the roll, please? Yes. Osterholm? Yes. Salmonson? Yes. Zoff? Yeah. Reed? Yes. Motion to table is approved. Long and painful. Why I may have a brother in law just like that, so I sympathize <laughs> with him. <laughs> well, taking care of your neighbor will go a long way. I, I taking just, care of your neighbor will go a long way. It depends on how deep the storm sewer is out of the Oh, you do. A second? Uh, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.